Hi, it's Pat Gillis here. And the other day someone was asking me about uh, hay catching on fire and things like that. And they, they said they had heard that that was possible, that it could just sort of catch fire on its own accord. And they were asking about that. And I guess, you know, it is true, right? That it's spontaneous combustion, it's called. And it usually happens like if, if hay is baled when it's still got too much moisture in it, you know, the perfect hay baling weather is when it's really hot, not a lot of humidity and a bit of a breeze is perfect. In actual fact, <laughs> every time in the summer, you know, when I'm kind of whining about uh, mucking out or riding in the heat or something in the heat, I think about the guys doing hay and I just think, stop complaining. <laughs> Cause those guys are out there like in the noonday sun trying to get the hay in. So I'm very, very lucky. In 25 years, the people who bring us our hay, um, they're just fantastic and they really know what they're doing. And I've never had a problem knock on wood with any kind of hay heating up. But I know some people aren't as lucky as that. Like, so some of the external warning signs that you want to look for, are like, obviously, if you've got steam coming out of the pail, like, get it the heck out of your barn. But other kind of subtler things, a little bit of, like, condensation or moisture looking like on the ground where the hay, when you move a bale of hay, or even, like, uh, hay, a bit of steam up in your eaves of your hayloft is a bad sign, right? Like there's something, there's heat is causing that, you know, and you want to get to it. You know, they have hay thermometers that you can buy. They say below 120, you're fine. And, uh, you know, between 120 and 140, you're in trouble and over 140, it's too late. You've got a burn fire. So you want to kind of monitor that kind of thing. If you don't have a, a hay thermometer, what you can do. You have hay that you're worried about, you know, you would want to be able to stick your hand in there or for sure if you're worried, I I find that a little hard to do, but I would take the string off and open it that way, you know, and then stick your hand in. And if you feel anything warm at all, that's, you know, really dangerous. I know a guy who kept round bales and he would stick a steel rod into the round bale, then leave it for an hour or so. And if he came back and felt that the rod was really hot to the touch, he knew that that hay was really hot. So I guess that's one way to do it without a hay thermometer. Uh, we had a couple of people write to me, and I appreciate that very much, that, that people reach out like that. But the question was that why do we keep the head collars on in the horses, when the horses are in the barn? And I'll be honest with you, that's a calculation that I made many, many years ago, that I just decided the chances of my horses getting caught up in the stall was less than the chances of them getting the risk of me not being able to get them out if there was a fire. Everybody has to make their own decisions. I mean, we do take some of them off. Like if I have a horse where the head collar rubs a little bit or it's annoying to the horse for some reason, you know, again, we make a calculation and we take it off. But generally speaking, I, I want to know I could just grab them and get them out if ever there's a fire. You know, we, we use older kind of yucky head collar. I don't leave nylon ones on, but uh, we leave on the old leather ones that would break if the horse got caught. And everybody has to make their own calculation on these things. Like if I didn't have such an old barn, if it didn't have so many twisty turns to get, you know, to get through it, you know, and if I didn't have to, you know, if I didn't have to store the hay up here over the, over where they live, you know, I might make a different calculation. I don't know. But barn fires are what terrify me the most. And, uh, I just want to be able to grab them and get them out if push comes to shove. Again, everybody has to make their own calculation. I'm not saying it's the right or the wrong thing. The last thing I'd ever tell anybody is to decide one way or the other if you're going to leave the head colors on. It has to be something you're comfortable with. You know, if you've only got one or two horses, you know, you probably maybe you want to take that chance. I don't know. If they've got easy access, you could just open the stall doors and try to get them out that way. Um, it's all things you've got to kind of calculate and figure out on your own. I read somewhere that a fire in a 10 by 10 foot stall, if it's bedded on straw, but I'm sure it's the same thing if it's bedded on shavings, that a 10 foot stall will be engulfed in flames within two to three minutes. And they did the math on that and they said that means that you've got 30 seconds to get the horse out unscathed, 60 seconds the horse will have burns, 90 seconds his lungs will be scorched. So time is so very much of the essence when it comes to fire. That's the decision we made years ago. And again, I, ideally, you know, it would be great um, if I didn't have to worry about barn fires, but I do.
So that's it for this week. If you're watching this anywhere besides at our blog, go on over there, scroll down, leave a comment if you'd like. Know what you do with hay, if you've got a hay thermometer, if it's a worry for you as well. And in the meantime, remember to thank your horse. We'll see you next week and thanks. Talk to you soon.